Hello everyone, John Farrell to a Top Spin Tennis. In this video, I'm gonna show you six magic moves on Casper Rude's two-hand backhand. The video is packed with a ton of tips. Make sure you stick around to the end for magic move number five to see what he does on the contact point and how it can help you keep more balls in play. Enjoy the video. Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to PTSO. He provided this footage to the channel, so I want to thank him for that. There is a link below in the description. Make sure you visit his channel and subscribe to it. He's got a lot of great footage on his channel. Magic move number one for Casper is really going to be the grip change. We're going to zoom in here on the video and show you exactly what he does. These two hands work in unison. They are not alone in this endeavor. So this left hand and right hand will both adjust in on the grip. His left hand is in a semi-Western grip and then the bottom hand will go to a continental grip. So any of you that are wondering which grips are best for the two hand backhand, for the most part when I watch the pros, the top hand, left hand is in a semi-Western, bottom hand is in a continental grip. So those hands work in unison and we really work on getting into that ideal grip as we set this left side of the body. Let's look at magic move number two, and that's just the closing of the face. This is very common with some of the top two hand backhands. Notice how his racket angle is slightly closed. You can see how it's kind of pointing to the ground here. Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal both do this, and I love it when they do this and they set this left side because closing that racket angle, one, it'll lock this left wrist into a stronger position, and two, it just sets that left side up so that when he takes this racket and throws it to the ball, having that face slightly closed will assist in keeping that ball in the court. If this racket angle is open, that ball has a tendency to, to sail, but by closing this racket face slightly here, it's going to ensure that the ball is more likely to stay in the court. So make sure this is a nice little magic move by just slightly closing that racket face as you take the racket back. Magic move number three is simply keeping this racket head to the outside of the hands. This will assist with the lag and the swivel of that racket head as it goes to the ball. So I'll. A lot of the top two hand backhands, they keep that racket head to the outside of the hands. Something that you may want to do because as we move these hands forward, so as those hands go forward, that racket head drags and drops into the slot. We get that swivel move. That swivel term really comes from Chuck Tomlin and John Carpenter of CTM Tennis. I love the uh, congruent tennis. I love the swivel, right, where these hands stay to the inside of the racket head. And then as we drop into the slot and go forward, that racket will swivel and we get that lag and drag into the ball. Magic move number four is, notice how that racket heads to the outside of the hands. Magic move number four is just dropping that racket head into the slot. Notice how this racket drops right here. There it is in the slot, right? So he's getting below the ball nicely here. The only way you're really going to get into the slot and feel comfortable is by relaxing that grip. So make sure you stay loose. If you're struggling getting below the ball, one, consciously, maybe you're not working on it, or two, maybe you're just too tight with your grip. There's too much tension in the hands and the arms. So make sure you stay relaxed, get into that slot so you can get below the ball and find that ball out in front. Magic move number five is finding that ball out in front. Notice where he finds the ball. Now this is just before contact. So you can see how he's squaring up nicely to the ball. He's going to find that ball out in front of his body. And notice one frame after contact. Look at the racket angle on that racket face. Notice how it's slightly closed. So let's do a little forensic investigation here. Here the racket face looks somewhat square, doesn't it? But notice one frame after contact. Notice how that face is slightly closed. That tells me that because he was coming from low to high, 
that he hit with the lower third of the strings. I've talked about this before, but a lot of the pros hit anywhere from center to lower third of the strings. By doing that, they ensure that that ball stays into the court. If he were to hit on the upper third of the strings, He's just not going to have good leverage. The racket's not in a stable position, and that ball will have a tendency to sail on him. It's going to go long. But by hitting with the bottom third of the strings, it's going to ensure that the face stays square, slightly closed, and that ball will stay in the court. And magic move number six is really the finish. Notice how... He is after contact. Look at that straight arm position with the non, with the with that drive hand. Face closes. Uh, be careful with this. I've seen some instructors saying to like really close that face or like roll over. That is a byproduct of the intent and the swing path and where he made contact with the string. Since he hit with the lower third, notice how these strings are pointing to the ground. Right? He's not doing that intentionally. That's because he hit with the lower third of the strings and that face closed. But great job finishing over the shoulder. And then look at the left leg, how it swings out to the outside. That's a great thing to do, especially when you get pulled wide. Notice how he's moving wide. He will close his stance and then swivel out here. It, that just frees up the shoulders and the hips and much easier to rotate on the shot. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell. Thank you so much for your support. Have a great day.